Good morning. It's Tuesday, April 30th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When the House Turns Upside Down, and our scripture is Esther chapter 8. Then King Xerxes said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, I have given Esther the property of Haman, and he has been impaled on a pole because he tried to destroy the Jews. Now go ahead and send a message to the Jews in the king's name, telling them whatever you want, and seal it with the king's signet ring. But remember, whatever has already been written in the king's name and sealed with a signet ring can never be revoked. So on June 25th, the king's secretaries were summoned, and a decree was written exactly as Mordecai dictated. It was sent to the Jews and to the highest officers, the governors and the nobles of all the 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia. The decree was written in the scripts and languages of all the peoples of the empire, including that of the Jews. The decree was written in the name of King Xerxes and sealed with the king's signet ring. Mordecai sent the dispatches by swift messengers who rode fast horses, especially bred for the king's service. The king's decree gave the Jews in every city authority to unite to defend their lives. They were allowed to kill, slaughter, and annihilate anyone of any nationality or province who might attack them or their children and wives, and to take the property of their enemies. The day chosen for this event throughout all the provinces of King Xerxes was March 7th of the next year. A copy of this decree was to be issued as law in every province and proclaimed to all peoples so that the Jews would be ready to take revenge on their enemies on the appointed day. So, urged on by the king's command, the messengers rode out swiftly on fast horses bred for the king's service. The same decree was also proclaimed in the fortress of Susa. Then Mordecai left the king's presence wearing the royal robe of blue and white, the great crown of gold, and an outer cloak of fine linen and purple. And the people of Susa celebrated the new decree. The Jews were filled with joy and gladness and were honored everywhere. In every province and city, wherever the king's decree arrived, the Jews rejoiced and had a great celebration and declared a public festival and holiday. And many of the people of the land became Jews themselves, for they feared what the Jews might do to them. The story of Esther turns one of our naive house theories upside down, that of an instant ready heaven where there's nothing more to be accomplished. The principle of the laws of the Medes and Persians just doesn't work that way. Haman, the evil, plotting, would-be throne stealer, has duped the king, a basically good guy, into issuing a holocaust order against the Jews that on a coming day they would all be killed. Mordecai, Esther's uncle, convinces Queen Esther to plead with the king for the lives of their people. The evil protagonist, Haman, gets wind of Esther and her uncle's activity and has a large wooden pole prepared to impale Mordecai. As Haman's evil is exposed, the king, who dearly loves Esther, is so furious that he has Haman impaled on the very pole meant for Mordecai. Now this is a plot that has thickened most Hollywood dramas, but there's more. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, a decree issued by a king cannot be reversed. According to the previous decree, the Jews must die. So the king gives Esther the right to issue a further decree in his name. She grants the legality of Jews to defend themselves without being held accountable. The day is saved, and Mordecai is elevated to being King Xerxes' right-hand man. For you today, sometimes our view of heaven is of a blurry tunnel where we emerge ethereally peaceful on the other shore with every complication figured out. God's book, including Esther, which paradoxically never mentions the name of God, tells us otherwise. As in Esther, in heaven evil is thwarted and righteous justice prevails, and so will heaven set at right that which has been wrong. But it won't be entirely without our involvement. 
as Esther and Mordecai had to scramble to come up with a solution to a messed up situation, a holocaust set in motion by a misguided human choice, so believers will be charged with ruling in Christ's kingdom. I believe this is one of the chief reasons for our three score and ten existence here on planet Earth. There is an apprenticeship necessary to become the kind of people God will use in ruling his beloved creation. If that were not so, there could be no meaning to the pain we experience in this life. God could take us directly to heaven if he desired, but he doesn't. So there's meaning in what we do and experience in this life. Like the laws of the Medes and Persians, we cannot change the decrees of the past. But we can cooperate with God by opening our hearts to learn his ways and do his will in his kingdom. And, like Mordecai, one day fully live into that role of communing face to face with our creator. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.